So I, I've seen quite a few people ask me how to make something that goes for your, like, camera-controlled rockets, basically, in public servers. So I figured, hey, might, might as well make a video on it. So the first thing we're going to need is basically any seat. I use this one because it's meant for aerodynamics and I like the attachment points, although you can use any of the other ones. And then I'm going to place down just a normal, like, 2x2. Two two. Actually, I'm going to place down... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to place down another 2x2. Two two. This could just be a bull block here. But then I want to have... Uh... You know what? Indecisive part 2. I'm going to place down a 2x2 two two and then have propellers there. So we're going to have two props just like that. And then we can have the angled servo, not saying angled servo. If we go into combat here, this aiming servo is how we're going to be making it aim wherever we want to. So far I've found that the best angle for this is around about 40 degrees. I've tried 45, I've had mixed results with that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some more propellers onto this. And this isn't only what we're going to be doing, but it is... A large part of the how it functions. And then I'm gonna take the movement at a gyro stabilizer right there, set the strength to like six, maybe make sure that doesn't like wiggle. Yeah, that, that seems to be fine. And now comes the part where we configure all of these to be space on this, and we're just gonna set this to shift and then set all of these to be space for forwards, but then I'm going to set the control to shift, because I just like shift as a backwards button more. And you do unfortunately have to have the aiming servos in the front of your vehicle, because if they were in the back, then if I'm trying to look up right now, those things are going down. Like those back ones. So even if I were to go that down, it's kind of just pitching me down. Which, not the most ideal. Now comes the part for another 1x2 block, that we're going to take this and add just some normal fins onto, like that, and then like that, and that's that basically done. And then what we need to do is have fins on also on these, but I'm actually going to put them backwards because it, I, I find that it makes it easier to launch to have the backwards fins, so that I can select all of that. Duplicate this, put that there, put that over there, and then if I try to fly away, you can see it's completely controlled by my camera, and this isn't too bad. Like, we can do some pretty maneuverable stuff with this. Uh, we're currently going, like, 250 miles per hour, which in kilometers is, I believe, a bit over 500. Maybe less, I don't, I'm not certain. But I don't think that that's nearly fast enough, so what we're going to do is duplicate this, put this on the side. I'm going to put that in the front because, well, I, I, I don't want it to have the aerodynamic gap there. And then we're going to put two more of these. These are, once again, the ones that are inversed, so the space is the reverse. And then how fast can we get this going back? Uh, a good 300 miles per hour when we're not worried about aerodynamics is not bad at all. As you can see, we basically have the same maneuverability, and I can, like, turn around here, turn around to this, fly through there, fly through that, and basically just go wherever my camera is facing, which I think is the a more precise way to fly. Especially since instead of turning, oh, hey, I need to turn this much, it'll auto-correct and just go to where your camera is actually looking. Taking it through here, we can get a nice and stable flight straight through this, and then we can go over to the other side. The faster you make it, the easier it is going to be to mess that up. Uh, this is it going backwards. It is not the best at going backwards, and this is why we have the aiming servos in the front. You can also have these be any other kind of fin. In fact, you can have the simple powered, although for simplicity, I just wanted to have the simple tail fins. But yeah, it will work with anything. I think the next thing I'm going to do is connect some propellers back here, because I still don't think that it's fast enough. 
despite taking a little bit of a loss in the like maneuverability range. And then I'm going to swap these out for the powered because of the limited mobility that we had been getting. So with all of those strangers, we're going about 330-ish, a little bit below, 320 to 330. And I would say that we're decently maneuverable. Here, I'm just going to fly around this lighthouse. And if we don't have any problem, I could be turning faster, but I just, I'm not. Like, if we want to go like that, we can just turn decently fast. And I think that this is pretty neat. And then because of these have the attachment points right here, we can even add another layer of that. And let's see how fast we go now. This is not even worrying about aerodynamics at all. Okay, now we're getting up to 340, almost 350. These small propellers really are, like, they're space, space efficient for their thrust, and they're just, they just have really high thrust. Like, two small propellers is better both connection-wise and stronger than a large propeller. But it is more power cores. Now I think it's time to start worrying about aerodynamics, so we have this big, like, cross-section here, is what it's called in aerodynamics, I believe, and we can turn that on with this. And I'm fine with some of the green pit parts, and I think that these need to have drag. However, all of this red is just completely unideal. So we're gonna zero drag glitch this, which I, I know is not the favorite solution of the community always, but I like it, so I'm gonna use it. And then we're just gonna... Let's see, you can grab a block like that, grab a block like that. Can I move this back further? I don't think so. We kind of have this hard edge here where everything is. So if we can get like a... We don't have any connection points on the front here, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. But having two blocks there... Um... We need two blocks here, and then we need a block to cover each one of these. And then I need to find a way to connect that to an anchor thing. I think the best way to do that is going to be to use flat connectors, probably. Yeah, because then we have a connection back here. And we can get this in here, so then we can go to blocks, go down to, uh, I think it's actually in movement for some reason. Detachable block. Uh, connect those up, connect those up, configure all. By do uh, control double clicking and then clicking configure, we can make scrap. So now if I press right click, it detaches, and let's see how fast we go now. Okay, so right off the bat, we are going so much faster than we had been. I'm just going to go in a straight line here just for a second to test, and we are going 600, not worrying about the green aerodynamics, 620. So that is really not too bad aerodynamics ones. However, we're not that far off from going supersonic. Not subsonic, but supersonic, so if I just change this to kilometers per hour, which I do like more for some things, considering, like, the the kilometers per hour uh, speed of sound is, like, 1,243, wait, sorry, 34.8, so it rounds to 1,235, but if you don't round it, it's 1,2,3,4,8, which I really don't mind. In kilometers per hour... Did I reverse the... Oh, I hadn't... Okay, I thought I reversed the units somehow, which I didn't think I did. But I hadn't detached the detachable blocks. Yeah, we're, we're getting up to 990, which really is... Yeah, we're getting up to 1000, which is so close to the speed that we want. One thing I can see that we can do is, because these propellers are attached to the back here, we can just move these back by one. And then we, we can be fine incorporating another one of these, and let's see how that does. So at this fast of a speed, we are getting a decent amount of oscillation, which I think is cancelling out some of our, like, momentum. So I'm really not sure what to do about that. 
but we are getting pretty high up there. I think we're reaching the rocket fuel paradox, where the fuel that you need to add more rockets does not, like, equate to the weight that it adds. So, like, when you add more weight through adding more thrust, it's not... There is a point of which, oh, hey, that's detrimenting you more than it's helping. And I think we're getting close. So let's see what happens if we do zero drag these top things. And that... And... Well, they have artificial drag, so I'm not sure what this is going to do. But... It seems like we can still go the direction that we want to, and how fast are we going? Ooh, is this gonna be it? Yep. This is a lot of speed. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to fly through the carrier. We might be going a bit too fast and for it to be easy to control, but that was that was pretty easy. We did hit the roof there, but that's honestly just because of piloting skill. You cannot go in first person with this because the camera for first person is just weird when it comes to the thing because it's like, oh, hey, you're looking down. Now we're moving your camera down. So I would personally recommend orbit. And then you'll just go wherever you're looking. And this is working really well. And then just because, why not add some fire pits? They don't have any drag on their own, as you can see but we can add them onto the back here. These are from the, like, the purchase with coins section, which you can just get for free. But now we can have a sick fire trail. And, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or, well, I guess you could have a concern if you wanted to, but I don't see why you would then leave them down in the comments, but thank you for watching. See ya. Also, the, the top speed is like 1,500, 1,600 kilometers per hour. Yep, just crossing over.